Yananchana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesma Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sonyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're reading uh, Brihad Bhagavat Amrita and we're on the first part, the first chapter and we're at verse number four. We're reading about the glories of Mathura. The glories of Mathura. We're hearing the glories of Mathura. Mm, Mathura is of course, very holy place. It's the birthplace of Lord Krishna. And it was the place where Lord Krishna came to kill Kamsa. So, uh, Sanatana Goswami is describing to us the glories of Mathura, the special features of Mathura. And he says, the reactions from a sin committed in some other place can be removed when you come to visit a holy place of pilgrimage. But if you commit a sin in a holy place, then it's very serious. Then it makes a, it, it creates a an irremovable, very hard shell or covering over the sinner. But when you do when if you commit a sin in Mathura, then the reactions from that sin they can be removed. They can be removed in Mathura itself. While you're still in Mathura, you can atone for that sin and remove the effects of the sin. So in this way, Mathura is a very auspicious, it's the most auspicious of holy cities. Because sinful reactions will not remain, they can be removed. So we're hearing evidence from different scriptures about the glories of Mathura. There's another statement in, uh, it's in the, it's in the, what Purana? 
Uh, and one, there's, a, there's another statement in the, in the same Purana. Uh, what Purana is it particularly? I think it's Varaha Purana. Hmm. Anyway, there's another statement in the Purana. And it says there that whatever sinful reactions one a person may have from the past, they can all be removed in Mathura. He may know or he may not know about his sinful reactions, but they can be removed in Mathura. And all of one's pious and impious karma can also be removed. And there's another statement in the Skanda Purana which says that there are many holy cities like Kasi, but Mathura is the most auspicious. Kasi is the name of Benares. And Mathura is the most auspicious of holy cities. Because Mathura gives liberation to the human beings in four different ways. One way is that if you take birth in that city, you get liberation. Another thing is you make your vows of initiation in Mathura, you get liberation. And the, another thing is to die in Mathura will get liberation. And the fourth thing is that if you have your cremation in Mathura, you get liberated. And then the Padma Purana describes that in other holy places, liberation is the greatest reward. That's considered the best thing you can get from the holy place. But in Mathura, you, get, you can get something which even the liberated souls want to get. And that is devotional service to the Supreme Lord, Hari. Okay, we're going on to next verse, number five. Sanatan Goswami is describing all glories to this place where we are living. Lord, Lord Krishna's Vrindavan forest. Lord Krishna prefers to live here in the forest of Vrindavan rather than to live in Vaikuntha or 
in the hearts of elevated saints. In Vrindavan, Krishna is always tending the cows. But at the same time, he will give pleasure to the gopis who love him so much. And of course, the gopis, they love Krishna particularly for the rasa dance. And Krishna increases the love of the gopis when he's sweetly playing his flute. It's so attractive to the gopis. So Vrindavan or Braja, the land of Braja, is the most sacred part of Mathura. Right, there's Mathura city, but there's also Mathura, the dis the district of Mathura, or the, or the like a like a like a, a, a state or something. It's a, we say district, yeah. It's a big area. So the most important part of that Mathura district is Vrindavan, where Krishna, where Krishna shows his very sweet pastimes. And within Vrindavan, there are three places very special. These are mentioned in the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. When Krishna and Balaram move from Mahavan to avoid the dangers there. So when when they move there, when it's described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, when Ram when Krishna and Balaram saw Vrindavan and Govardhan and the banks of the river Yamuna, then they both enjoyed so much pleasure, so much happiness. So the three most important things which are so dear to Krishna are Vrindavan, the village of Vrindavan, the, the river Yamuna and the Govardhan hill. So because these three places are very dear to Krishna, Sanatana Goswami glorifies them. He hopes, Sanatana Goswami is hoping that by glorifying them, he will get their mercy. So he begins to glorify Vrindavan. 
，萨那顿高苏阿米希望通过荣耀这三个地方，他可以获得仁慈，因此他便开始荣耀了本达文。So Vrindavan is a super excellent place. It's a place. It's a great joy of Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami, who's writing this book, he feels so much happiness in glorifying Vrindavan. Sanatana Goswami, he in Vrindavan this place feels so much happiness in glorifying Vrindavan. 因此，他写了这部书来表达表达他的快乐之情，并且荣耀了文达文。When when Sanatana Goswami was writing this book, he was at that time he was living in Vrindavan. 当 Sanatana Goswami 撰写这部书籍的时候，他当时正在正居住在文达文。And he was in ecstasy. He was so happy to be in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Supreme Lord Krishna shows very special beauty and a very special loving mood. In Vrindavan, the Supreme Lord Krishna shows very special beauty and a very special loving mood. In Vrindavan, the Supreme Lord Krishna shows very special beauty and a very Krishna does not show this kind of mood any other place except in Vrindavan. 除了在文达文之外 ，Krishna 在别的地方并没有展示这样特殊的心态。That's why the devote the 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 very good, very advanced devotees they they get more pleasure by his presence in Vrindavan. 正是由于这个原因，那些进步的奉献者，由于主 Krishna 在文达文的临在，感受到更多的快乐。They feel more pleasure in Vrindavan than they feel when Krishna is in Vaikuntha, or when he's in the hearts of the great yogis. 比起主 Krishna 临在于 Vaikuntha， 或者是临在于伟大的瑜伽师的内心。这些进步了的奉献者，由于主 Krishna 临在于文达文，他们感受到更高的快乐。So Krishna is, is he, he resides eternally in Vrindavan. For those who are the very perfect devotees, they can see Krishna in Vrindavan always. 对于那些完美的奉献者们，他们总是能。看见主 Krishna 永恒的临在于 Vrindavan。And Vrindavan, of course, is very beautiful place, and it allows Krishna to show his great beauty and wonderful qualities. Vrindavan is a beautiful place. It allows Krishna to show his great beauty and wonderful qualities. 允许 Krishna 展示他无与伦比的超然的美丽和品质。And it, everything is there for Lord Krishna to show his wonderful pastimes, to perform his pastimes there in Vrindavan. 在那里的一切都是为了有有利于主 Krishna 展示他奇妙的逍遥时光，并且上演上演他的逍遥时光。Even the yogi may, may be very advanced. He won't be able to feel the ecstasy which devotees in Vrindavan feel. Even you're in the kingdom of God. That means, like, if you go to Vaikuntha, that's the kingdom of God. You won't feel that ecstasy which the people in Vrindavan, which the devotees in Vrindavan, get being with Krishna. 即便一个人去了神的国度，也就是去了白昆塔，他也不能感受到文达文的奉献者和主 Krishna 在一起的时候感受到的狂喜之情。Now sometimes Krishna is present in other place, in other abodes, other places, but he he won't show some he he may not show himself there. 
，有的时候主 Krishna 他也会，嗯，临在于其他的地方，但主 Krishna 不展示他自己。But Krishna never does like that in Vrindavan. 但是在 Vrindavan 这个地方，主 Krishna 从来不会这样做。嗯、Just like we were reading in the previous text, the previous verse. It said Krishna is always present in Mathura. 就像我们在上一个诗节当中是说的，主 Krishna 他永恒的，他临在于 Mathura。But when we say present, it can also mean that he's hidden. It doesn't mean that everybody can see him. 但是“临在”这个词，有的时候也有它。隐藏起来的意思，就是他不总是被人们看到。So although Krishna is always in Mathura, he cannot he 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 often he hides himself from the everyone. 尽管主 Krishna 他也在 Mathura， 但是他经常把自己从每个人众人的从众人的眼前把自己躲藏起来。However, we see when Krishna and Balaram, when they went to Mathura, all the ladies of Mathura described, they described Krishna and how he's how Krishna wanders through the Vrindavan forest. 然而，当主 Krishna 和 Balarama 去了 Mathura 的地方的时候。马图拉的女士们就形容了，当主 Krishna 他漫游在文达文森林当中，穿越这些森林的情景。So the ladies of Mathura, they understood that Krishna is still there in Vrindavan forest, and he's still wandering there in the forests of Vrindavan. 这些女士们明白，主 Krishna。时至今日，仍然在文达文森林漫游着。And he's always there in the forests of Vrindavan. 主 Krishna 永恒的在文达文森林当中。Just think how pious the the land of Vrindavan must be. 只是去想象一下，文达文这个地方是多么的虔诚。Lord Krishna appears there, and although he's the personality of Godhead, he disguises himself to look like a norm, an ordinary human being. 尽管主 Krishna 显现在那里，尽管他就是至尊性格神兽本人，但是他却把自己打扮成，掩饰为一个普通人。And he wanders through the forest. Having his different pastimes with his different devotees. He in the forest wanders, he and other devotees are performing their devotional acts. And the lotus feet of Lord Krishna are worshipped by Lord Shiva and also by the goddess Rama Devi. Lord Krishna's lotus feet have even been worshipped by Lord Shiva and Rama Devi. At the same time, Krishna is wearing wonderful、uh, garlands of forest flowers around his neck. Lord Krishna, 一直在他在他的项肩戴着森林的花环，穿成的嗯，森林的鲜花穿成的花环。And he plays on his flute as he comes through the forest with all of his cows and with Lord Balaram. 当主 Krishna 他穿越这些森林的时候，当他和巴拉拉玛在一起，他便吹着他的鼻子。So Krishna is always busy tending his cows in the Vrindavan forest. 主 Krishna 在文达文的森林，他总是忙碌着照料着这些母牛呢。But at the same time, he's able to keep all the gopis, who are the head, the the main gopi is Sri Radhika. Srimati Radharani, he keeps all the gopis, including Radharani. He keeps them immersed in total happiness. 与此同时，他令所有以舍马提·拉迪卡为首的狗皮们沉浸在完全的快乐之中。He keeps them 
in total happiness because he always finds opportunities to engage in the rasa dance with them and other pastimes also. And when Krishna plays his flute, the sound is so captivating that it attracts the attention of the entire universe. So externally, externally, Krishna's purpose is to take care of the cows and to call the cows. But at the same time, he attracts the gopis. Because he, whenever the gopis see, hear Krishna or see Krishna, then the gopis will think about enjoying with Krishna. So his main purpose in playing his flute is to actually increase the ecstasy of the gopis. The sound of the flute makes the gopis want to enjoy more, they desire more to be with Krishna. They want the gopis want to enjoy some loving exchange with Krishna. And that's actually the real reason, that's the ultimate reason for Krishna's appearance on this planet. Yeah, he comes to give pleasure to his very confidential devotees. So sometimes Krishna is herding the cows, but at the same time he enjoys uh, flirting with the young girls. So this is Krishna's ultimate pleasure. Okay, we're going on now. Text number six describes all glories to Yamuna, the Yamuna River, who is the daughter of the sun god and the sister of Yamaraj. And Yamuna is the beloved of Krishna, who, who is the killer, famous as the killer of the demon Mura. The Yamuna River has made friends with the whole district of Mathura. And the Yamuna River is greater, it's got, it's surpassed the greatness of Ganga Devi. Yamuna appears like a river, 
but actually she carries the nectar flowing from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Right. So we said there were three things, three places in, in Mathura which are very, very important to Krishna, very special. One was the, the forests of Vrindavan, the second thing is Yamuna River, and the third thing is Govardhan Hill. So we heard about the glories of Vrindavan forest. Now we're hearing about the Yamuna River. It's the holiest of rivers. And the Yamuna River is an orna it's like an ornament to Vrindavan Dam. And because Yamuna is the daughter of the sun god Viviswan, she has the power to, sp to spread light around the world. And because she's the sister of Yamaraj, and Yamaraj, of course, is the god of death, so she is also able to give perfect justice. At the time of death, we all get justice. We go to Yamaraj and he will judge us. What have we done, good or bad? So the Yamuna River makes a winding path through the district of Mathura. She is the greatest of all the holy bathing sites. She is even greater than the Ganga. And that is described by Lord Varaha in the Varaha Purana. It says the Yamuna River is 100 times more sacred than the Ganga. And Lord Vara says, he's speaking to Mother Earth, O oh Goddess Earth. He's telling the Earth, Mother Bhumi, Goddess Earth, that uh, the Yamuna is his own abode. Oh, well, wait, more sacred. Yeah. And, and the Yamuna is in the Lord's own abode in Mathura. So in that, that part where the Yamuna is, it's very special. So 
So more sacred than Mathura by a hundred times is the place on the Yamuna where the Kesi demon was killed. And one hundred times more powerful, more uh, one hundred times more purif purifying than that place where Casey was killed is is the spot where Krishna rested after the demon was killed. So we may wonder why is the Yamuna so special? So the reason is she's very special because she's very dear to Lord Krishna. She, she helps Krishna in Krishna's pastimes in Gokula and in Mathura and even in Dwarka. And the Yamuna River, that she originates from the lotus feet of Krishna. And although the, the Yamuna, she says, I'm going to carry her, my current of water, but actually she distributes the honey of intimate Krishna devotion wherever she goes. And that honey is the honey of intimate devotion to Krishna. It has a very rare and sweet taste. So anybody who somehow takes shelter of her, that they once they get relief from material distress. And you get also spiritual satisfaction. So now we're going to hear about the glories of Govardhan. And Govardhan is the emperor of all mountains. And the gopis, they call Govardhan the best servant of Lord Hari. And we know Lord Krishna stopped Indra, stopped Nanda Maharaj from performing the yagna to worship Indra and told him just worship Govardhan Hill. And Govardhan Hill was then held up for one week on Krishna's lotus hand. So Krishna 
So, although Govardhan nowadays appears like a, a, a long, low hill, he is actually the greatest of mountains. And the glory of Govardhan is actually greater than any other mountains like the Himalayas or Mount Sumeru, that Govardhan is greater than all of these. So the Govardhan Hill, uh, he serves Lord Krishna um, more his, because his power is greater than any other mountain, than any ordinary mountains. Govardhan uses his power for the service of Krishna. And he, he serves Krishna in Krishna's personal abode in, in very intimate situations. And because Govardhan serves Krishna so well, the gopis of Vrindavan, they sing about Govardhan and they praise him. Yeah, there's a verse which is in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam in the chapter called uh, Songs of the Gopis. And there's this one verse which Lord Chaitanya would recite. When Lord Chaitanya was going around the Govardhan Hill, he would sing this verse which was sung by the gopis. Of all the of all the devotees, the Govardhan Hill is the best. This is the words of the gopis. And the gopis say, Oh, for Krishna and Balaram, along with their calves and cows and the cowherd friends, this hill supplies everything they need. Yeah. On the Govardhan Hill we find there are caves, there are fruits, there are flowers, there are vegetables, there's water for drinking and very soft grass. So in this way, this hill shows respect to Krishna. 
，这座山就以这种方式来向 Krishna 展示他的敬意。And because the Govardhan hill is touched by the lotus feet of Lord Krishna and Balaram, so Govardhan hill is very jubilant, very very ecstatic, very happy. 由于 Govardhan 山得到主 Krishna 和 Balarama 莲花足的触碰。因此，他感到非常的快乐，非常的狂喜，非常的喜乐。The people of Nanda Gram, that that's a home where Nanda Maharaj was living in Nanda Gram, so they had arranged for offering the Indra Yagya to offer everything to Indra. 在 Nanda Gram， 也就是 Nanda 大军的居所。那里的人们安排了一个给英主，天地英主的亚甲祭祀。And Lord Krishna reciprocated with Govardhan by、uh, taking all these offerings to offer to Govardhan Hill. 主 Krishna 通过把所有这些贡品拿走，来献给 Govardhan 山，以此方式来回报 Govardhan。And in this way, he got all the people of Vrindavan to worship the Govardhan Hill, the cows, and the Brahmanas. 以这种方式 ，Krishna 令文达文的人们崇拜了 Govardhan 山、母牛和婆罗门们。And they offered mountains of food. At that time, they offered mountains of food to the Govardhan Hill and the cows and the Brahmanas. 在那个机会，呃，在那个节日上，他们为格尔登山、母牛和婆罗门献上了小山一样多的食物。And they also circumambulated the Govardhan Hill. 并且所有全体的居民们开始绕拜格尔登山。So when Indra got the news about this, he felt insulted, and he tried to destroy Vrindavan. 当天地英主闻听此消息，他便想要伤害温达文的居民们。And he sent terrible rainstorm to try to destroy everyone in Vrindavan. 他降下了滂沱大雨、狂风暴雨，来毁毁灭整座温达文。And so at that time, Lord Krishna he easily picked up the Govardhan hill with his left hand. 在那时，主 Krishna 轻而易举的用他的左手举起了，起拾起了高人山。And for seven days, Krishna held up the hill on his left hand just to protect his devotees. 他连续举起了七天七夜，只是为了保护他的奉献者。So he, Krishna proved that Govardhan Hill is. Greater than the King of Heaven. 就这样，主 Krishna 证明，高丹山甚至比天堂的国王还要伟大。So of course we we all know this pastime described in the tenth canto Srimad Bhagavatam. 众所周知，这个小时光在《圣念波迦瓦谭》的第十篇当中。All right. So then, next verse goes on to describe the glories of Sri Krishna Prema Bhakti. 下一个世界描述了 Sri Krishna Prema Bhakti 的荣耀 So we should know that the feet of Prema Bhakti are made up of the truth of the Vedas. 我们要知道 ，Prema Bhakti 的足是由《韦达经》的真理构成的。And liberation has come to worship her. 解脱亲自前来崇拜她。The Vaishnavas they abandoned liberation. They had no interest in liberation. Vaishnava men, 对解脱
不感兴趣，他们放弃了解脱。So now liberation has given up her dependence on mantras. She doesn't depend on mantras. She doesn't depend on penances, and she doesn't depend on sacrifices, and she doesn't even depend on renunciation. So what does liberation want? She just simply wants the shelter of Prema Bhakti. So after glorifying Vrindavan and the Yamuna in Govardhan Hill, now Sanatana Goswami is glorifying Bhakti Devi. Bhakti Devi is a personification of devotional service to Lord Krishna. Bhakti Devi is a personification of devotional service to Lord Krishna. So devotional service offered to Lord Krishna should be given with pure love, with prem. Actually, the real essence of devotion is prema or love of God. The, there are lower, the lower goals of life, like what people like the impersonalist one, they're interested in liberation from the cycle of birth and death. Mm. But we can see liberation as offering herself. She wants to be a maidservant of bhakti. Yeah, bhakti Devi, uh, she's approached by liberation. Liberation becomes very humble, and she comes to Bhakti Devi's feet, and she prays to to uh, to, to just have a look at her face. No, oh, she's not able. Bhakti Devi is not even able to look on the face. Oh no, liberation is not able to look on the face of Bhakti Devi. So we should understand from this that liberation follows the practice of devotional service. Yeah. Devotional service is represented by Bhakti Devi. And at the feet of Bhakti Devi is liberation. It doesn't matter what the motives a person has. 
而且这跟一个人的动机。But if he takes up one of the devotional practices like hearing and chanting, or the other, you know, there's nine different ways in which we do devotional service. So if he takes up any one of these different processes, then very soon he will be guaranteed liberation. 嗯, and without having any connection with devotional service, then it doesn't matter what he does, he will not get liberation. Okay, so we'll stop here today. Time is up. We'll continue. Okay. So, oh, no, it, there's not, is there going to be any difference if we put our ashes for our deceased relatives, if we put our ashes in the Ganga or in the Yamuna, will it be different? Because we're hearing that the Yamuna is more sacred than the Ganga. So is it better to put the ashes in the Yamuna than to put them in the Ganga? No, it's the same. Because the Yamuna flows into the Ganga. Some people put the ashes in the Yamuna, usually we put them in the Ganga. The ashes are put into the Yamuna to relieve us from sinful reactions. We see in the Srimad Bhagavatam the pastime is there that the sons of Maharaj Saga had all burned to ashes because of their offence against Lord Kapila. So how, how they, they wanted to know how they could relieve, how these uh, sons of Maharaj Sagar could be saved from hell. So they were told you have to bring the water of the Ganges down to this planet, and then we'll destroy, the touch of the water of the Ganges will take away their sins. Yeah. So, the, they didn't say you have to bring the water of the Yamuna, they said bring the water of the Ganga. Yamuna is actually a tributary of the Ganges. It joins the Ganga. Mm. So there's no real difference. You know, half, half, you could say half of the Ganga is Yamuna. Half of the water of the Ganga is Yamuna water. 
，所以没有什么真正的区别。可以这样说，恒河水的一半恒河水都，呃，是阳的。Okay. If anybody has any questions, they can put them into the chat, and then next week we can answer them. Okay. Hey, good money, funny. Yeah. Uh, 就是如果大家聆听的呃呃，如果聆听的人有什么问题的话，那么可以把你们的问题就提到这个聊天对话框当中，然后我们下一周讲课的时候加以回答。Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Brinda ki. Hare. Ganshir Guru Mani, Ganshir Sati, Tufon Niman. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj.